Hello and welcome to the Grifters Game Room. On this, the first episode, I'll be talking about dice. Dice history, dice cheating, and different dice games. Dice have a very interesting history. According to archaeologists, they date back between four and 8,000 years, developed independently by different cultures at different times. Early dice were made up of various materials, including seashells, nuts, and stones, and were later replaced by animal knuckle bones. To this day, the Arabic word for knuckle bone is the same word they use for dice. The expression rolling the bones is still, is still used when referring to throwing dice. The ancient Romans believed that the outcome of a roll of dice was determined by Zeus's daughter, Fortuna. Fortuna is known worldwide as Lady Luck. If the dice rolled in your favor, you were considered fortunate. If you were very fortunate, you could win a fortune. With so much on the line, it's not surprising that as long as there have been dice players, there have been dice cheaters. A person who cheats at dice today might be called a dice mechanic or switcher. My favorite story about a dice switcher is a guy who used a device built into his cane. He would, uh, you, he would switch the dice in and out using the cane at will. And he never got caught actually switching the dice. The interesting story... Part of the story is the way that he got caught. You see, he, when he, one time when he limped up to the table using the cane, he was limping on his right leg. But when he limped away from the table, he was limping on his left leg. A watchful uh, pit boss saw what was going on and questioned him and then found the compartment in his cane. I'd like to show you some of the dice in my collection. I have to be careful where I exhibit this collection because in certain states like Nevada, having some of these dice in your collection is a felony. Now there's different kinds of rigged dice. I'm going to try and explain as many of the different kinds as I can to you. Uh, first there's uh, CO dice, what are known as certain outcome. Uh, these include electric dice or juice dice and uh, someone that is proficient with all side tappers. I'll explain what those are along with others. Juice dice are dice that have magnets or metal plates in them that are drawn to an electric magnet built inside the gambling table. This table can be switched on by the, by the uh, dealer at any time he wants to get the outcome that he's looking for. A place that would have something like this were called juice joints or wire joints. Other kinds of rigged dice are what are called PC dice or percentage dice. And there's many different variations on those. I'm going to explain as many of them to you as I can. The first dice I'm going to show you today are what some people refer to as certain outcome dice. Although I personally haven't practiced with them enough to get a perfect result. But I am going to show you how they work. What they are is they're specially designed dice with a chamber in each side of the dice connected to a center chamber that's filled with mercury. When they're tapped on the table, like I'm right now I'm trying to tap a 2 and 3, the mercury... The mercury runs out of the center chamber and into the side you're tapping towards. Let's try it again. This time we're going to try and tap a 4 and a 5. And you get your 4 and 5. Now you're not always going to get the same results. It depends on how you throw them. There's the 4 and 5 again. 4 and 6. 4 and 6. So this time that 6 is tapped a little bit harder than when it hit the table to tap itself out. Now I got a 4 and 3. So they are not certain outcome, but they do greatly improve your chances when they're used. Now there's many kinds of dice that are referred to as PC dice, or percentage dice, including weighted dice like these. These dice are heavily weighted and they're called dead setters. A 7. Four. And another 7. The reason that they're called dead setters is two reasons. One, they have a very heavy weight loaded into one side of the dice. They're loaded down. So that when they roll on the table, if they roll around enough, they're always going to come up on a 7. Now they also have a dead giveaway, which is the other reason they're called dead setters. 
You'll hear an extra rattle sometimes when they hit the table. Like that. I still got my 7, but you can hear that rattle as the dice settled on its heaviest side. Besides different kinds of weighted dice, there's also uh, misshapen dice, each with their own special name and serving a different function. You might have beveled dice that, have a, that are beveled to where one side is rounded more than the other side so that it rolls off of the given side. You might have uh, beveled the other way, which are like suction dice, where you have a bevel inside, and those are more likely to stick to a hard surface. Depends on what type of surface you're throwing them on. Uh, then you have uh, what are like uh, called bricks or flats, where one side is a little bit is shaved down a little bit to where it's flatter than the other side. And on a rolling dice, it's more likely to stop on one of the flattened sides, like a domino. Um, you also have uh, barrels, which are uh, beveled, or I mean, are, are trimmed down so that they're a little bit longer than they are wide, and they're more likely to roll and land on one of the roll sides as opposed to the ends. Uh, you might have a raised spot dice where one of the dice has a raised, like the, the uh, one dot would be raised a little bit so that when the dice are rolling on the table they're more likely to bounce off of the side that has the one on it uh, because of the raised bump. Uh, there's also a bristle dice which have a tiny pin or a uh, piece of metal sticking out of the dot so that side is more likely to catch on a cloth table. Uh, you might have trip dice. A trip dice would have one edge or two uh, shaved down a little bit so that th that side would more likely roll. Uh, you also might have uh, what are called cap dice. A cap dice is where they would shave down one side and then add a polymer or something to the outside of that dice to give it extra weight, to make it a weighted dice, although it would look exactly the same. Uh, you might have stick dice or uh, liquid cap dice. Uh, liquid cap dice are, are something that's brushed onto one side of the dice so that when you hold them or blow on them, that liquid, that chemical, mel uh, warms up and makes that side, side sticky. Uh, women have gotten that same result by when they blow on the dice, touching it to their lips and getting lipstick on the dice. Now all of these things do not make for perfect throws, but they can increase your odds. That's why they're called percentage dice. Uh, you also might have uh, slip dice, which are uh, smooth on some sides and roughed a little bit on the other, so they're more likely to slide off of the slick, slide, slick side and land and grab hold on one of the rougher sides. Uh, then there's uh, cut edge dice, where the edge of the dice are cut. Uh, these are sometimes referred to as razor uh, dice or sawtooth dice. A sawtooth dice would have little jagged uh, cuts in it so that it would more likely catch on the felt of a table. Uh, razor edge dice are very, very sharpened on, one, on some sides and rounded on the other so the dice are more likely to roll off of the certain side and stick on another side. So all these different dice uh, are different shapes of dice that can be used uh, to increase the odds of the player. Another way that they might uh, cheat at dice are uh, misspotted dice. A misspotted dice would be a dice uh, like this pair right here. These are called door pops. When they rolled out, I got an 11. This time I got an 11. And that time I got a 7. Let me give you a close-up on those. Now these are called door pops. We got an 11, an 11, and a 7. These dice are always going to roll 7 or 11s. That's because they're specially designed dice. This die has a 5 on all sides of it. And the other one has 2s and 6s. These are instant winners and craps. Now a dice switcher would be able to pick up a regular pair of dice, would be able to hold these, pick up a regular set of dice, and throw the door pops. Uh, there's all different kinds of holds and throws and different things that you can use to switch the dice, but that's one of the things that they would do. They could pick these up, throw those out, and they would get the results that they were looking for. 
Miss Spotted Dice, like those door pops, are referred to as horses, busters, or double numbers. Uh, besides the door pops, you also have uh, passers, which are uh, dice that are always going to roll a pass, a 7 or 11. Those are winners. You have bust outs, which are losers, that are never going to roll a 7 or 11. So after the point is established, they may be thrown in. And you're never going to get a 7 or 11 until you roll the number that you want. Uh, you also might have tops, which only have all high numbers on them. Uh, or you might have low uh, bottoms, which have only the low numbers on them. Sometimes they'll be thrown in combination. You'll get a high-low splitter, where you've got one die that has all high numbers and one die that has all low numbers. You're going to roll a lot of sevens with those. Whenever I talk about misspotted dice, people ask me, how could anybody fall for a dice that has the wrong spots on it? Well, the answer is twofold. First of all, when the dice are rolled out, people just commonly look at only the top number on the dice because to them, that's the only number that matters. Also, because of the very nature of dice, the very shape of them, you can only see two or maybe three sides at any given time. That's, uh, that's why a pit boss will often have a little mirror down in the bottom of his pit so that he can look at the dice on both sides at the same time. I'll give you an example. Let's say you take the dice, you roll them out. You're going to add the numbers on the top to the numbers on the bottom. What do you get? 14. It's always 14. That's because two each opposite sides of the dice always add up to 7. You've got 4 and 3 make 7, 2 and 5 make 7, 1 and 6 make 7. Same with the other one. You have 3 and 4, 1 and 6, 2 and 5. So uh, we're going to try a little uh, experiment here. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you have an 11 on the top. Now if you have 11 on the top, you want to see a 3 on the bottom when you look in that mirror. What you don't want to see is 11 on the top and 11 on the bottom. See, that's 22. 22 is no good because if you see 11 on the bottom, you want to see 3 on the top. Now let's uh, try a little uh, combination here. How about uh, double fives? Doubles are always fun. You get double fives and double twos. Now, double, uh, 5 and 5 is 10. Another way to get 10 would be uh, 6 and 4. I do all the math. 6 and 4 works with 3 and 1. It doesn't work with the, du it doesn't work with the double 5s. The double 5s only work with the double 2s. Let's try a little experiment here. Here I have 4 and 1 with the ace closest to my wrist. But if I give the dice a little shake, the ace jumps to the outside. Now someone with way too much time on their hands, like myself, could show you all six sides of the dice at once if they wanted to. There you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Another kind of rigged dice are uh, called floats or floaters, which is what these are. If you look closely, you can actually see the center of the five spot is hollowed out. That's because these dice are hollowed out on one side as opposed to weighted. So it's a little bit easier, but the, the, the weight of them is off. So when they're thrown, they're more likely to come up on the opposite side from the side that's drilled out. One way that you can tell if you've got a set of floaters is if you drop them in a glass of water, they'll float. That's why they're called floaters. They have a hollowed out section on one side. Uh, you could also use a glass of water to test for weighted dice. If you drop the dice in a glass of water several times, it's always going to come out on the same side on the bottom because the weighted side through the water is going to pull down and land on that weighted side. Another way of testing dice to see if their, their weight is off is to do a spin test. You hold it loosely between your fingers and you spin it. If it wobbles on its own, or it turns on its own if, you, if held loosely, then you know you have a weighted dice. Also, the spin test can tell you if you have misshaped dice, because you can just look at it and see if the pattern changes as you turn it. You'll notice that one side is more flattened out or smoothed out as you spin it around like that. 